Imagine combining some of the best features of database tools like Airtable alongside AI chatbot functionality and providing it at a price that isn't based on the number of users in your organization. Sound impossible? Not with AITable.ai. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. Now, honestly, the name AITable.ai almost seems like a typo. If you go to Google and you just type in AI table, it's going to come back and try to offer you suggestions of, do you mean Airtable? But AI table is gaining huge popularity in the space. They have an app Sumo deal, which is a lifetime discount available for their software. And you might already be familiar with their organization because they've also created API Table, which is an open source version of this software. But now with AI Table.ai, they're providing a hosted version of this software along with some more of the advanced AI functionality. So, first, let's take a look at their pricing. And you're going to want to contrast this with the AppSumo offerings to see which is a better fit for you. But the really exciting part about this is that if you take a look at these pricing plans, the starter plan allows two seats. But anything after that, be it for individual and small teams or businesses and enterprises, take a look at this. This is going to offer functionality for unlimited seats a month. So you're not paying $39 per user. This is $39 for this package and you get unlimited seats for your users. And this kind of pricing is so rare for no-code SaaS tools like this. So it's a really accessible option for most organizations. Now I'm showing the application in dark mode today because I think it looks really slick, but they do have a light mode if you want to use that as well. And this is going to feel very similar to Airtable in many ways, or at least Airtable from a couple years ago, kind of pre everything they were doing with interfaces. But there's a lot of additional functionality as well. So of course we can create our tables, which are referred to as data sheets. We have different views that we can add, and many of these are in common with Airtable. So we've got grids, galleries, Kanbans, Gantz, and calendars. And they have forms, which they call magic forms, which don't feel that magical to me, but work fine for form functionality. One unique view that they have is called an architecture view. And so if you click on that architecture view, what you need to have is some sort of table with a relationship to itself. So in this case, we have a table of contacts all with titles. Let's say these are employees in our organization and we want to create an organizational chart from this. And so what we can do is create a linked relationship between these contacts and themselves. So these are going to be the reports of these individual people. And now in this architecture view, we can see what this actually looks like. We've got this nice org chart and we can see the titles of the people. We can go to our style and choose which fields we want to show in this case. So title makes the most sense. So you could do this for something like a chart of accounts as well. Their dashboards are really slick too. So we can create different dashboards, add different widgets to it. But the part that I think is actually the coolest is that this is all built on a canvas, which means we can actually drag these to different shapes and sizes and put the layouts exactly how we want, as opposed to being limited by so many other platforms where you have just, hey, you can have two widgets across the screen and it has to fit exactly into these boxes. Similar to Airtable, we can also add widgets or extensions on the side here so we can get the context of that as we're looking directly in our data. The nice thing about this is that we can add a new widget. We've got a number of these to choose from, including scripting, but you can also add custom widgets, which is really cool if you create a new widget. We can do that with TypeScript, or JavaScript. So it's got some examples if you want to build your own custom widgets as well. You can imagine a platform called API table is going to make APIs front and center in the application. So if you click API on any of these data sheets, then you're going to see this really great documentation, super well documented. You get examples, you get curl commands, you can do it in Python. And this is really nice how you don't even have to leave the context of the records that you're on. One really unique thing about AI table is they don't have the rigid base and table architecture that Airtable does. This in fact, feels much more similar to monday.com where you can still have the tables or data sheets and you still have links between the tables but these objects over here that you might assume are different bases or databases here are actually really just folders this means if i want to i could take the crm database and simply drag it into a different folder the only thing that's going to change here is if you have different permissions that are applied to any of those areas so this in many ways is way more flexible than Airtable because you don't have to really worry about where that data is living but what's so cool about this is that let's say at the folder level that we give certain permissions and we say only our sales team can access this information but we want certain information to be accessible up here in our project management so one of the things that we could do is add a mirror and this is going essentially provide kind of a portal to that data. It can still be updated, but it's going to take the permissions of whatever we have for that mirror. So let's create a mirror from this view. 
And you can see this is where we get some of that additional permission functionality because we could hide a certain subset of that data. So maybe in our CRM database of our customers, we only want to make the type of customers available to our customer success or project management team. And the ones that are prospects, the deals that we haven't closed, we don't want to make available. So this is how we can use mirrors to provide different levels of permissions and functionality depending on the user roles of our team. And I kind of get a kick out of some of the English that's used throughout the application to say, I knew it. Yes, I knew this already as we click this button. Then we can take this database's mirror and we could move this wherever we want. And speaking of permissions or more admin features, we can hop into our settings. And we've got this really clean dashboard that shows our usage across our account. But a couple of the things we could do here is we could create our own roles and we could do this by different teams. So now instead of adding users to individual things, we could add users to these roles or groups that we can apply in different locations throughout the system. It's also really nice if you want to audit everything that's going on. There's this space logs feature and you can see all of the different actions that have been happening throughout the system. We moved this database mirror to a different folder, or we created that, or we're updating these records. All of that kind of information is going to be available so you can audit who's doing what in the application. Now, we can't talk about AI table without talking about their AI functionality. And there's two main ways that they're starting to do this. One is around their Copilot tool. And you can click on the Copilot, and this brings up a chat interface within the application. Now, to be honest, they're doing some experimentation and releasing different versions of this. So where I think this is headed is that the Copilot is actually going to be able to query the data that you have inside of your data sheets. So if I want to ask questions like, what's my current pipeline for Q3? I'd be able to do that, and it's going to give me answers based on my data. However, I think they've currently rolled back some of that functionality. So right now, the Copilot is just trained on their own database. So that means it is really helpful from a support standpoint if I want to ask a question like, what are mirrors? It's going to give me an explanation based on the data they've trained this on. So this functionality, once it becomes a little bit more robust, I think is going to be akin to something like a Zapier Central. And we'll see if that includes integrated actions or if it's just based on reading the data itself. But the AI functionality that most people are getting excited about is what you can do to train your own chatbots or chat agents within the application. So we could have our own table of data. This is a simple FAQ right here. We've got AI tables chatbot dummy data, and you can simply go to add to create a new AI agent. For this example, we'll choose the Q&A chatbot, press next, and we'll choose the data sheet that we want to source this from, and we'll pull from our customer service questions and our chatbot Q&A. Press OK. Now we sped through the training a little bit here just so you don't have to watch it, but that took under two minutes. I'd say maybe just about a minute to be able to train based on that data set. So now we can ask it a question and send, and it's gonna come back with an answer based on the training data. It also gives these recommended questions to make it easier for your users. You can set different settings for your chatbot. You can see here which model that it's currently using to be able to provide this. You could give it opening remarks. You can choose information about the filters and what it responds with if it's not able to answer that information. And a really cool feature here is that you can actually enable a form to collect information. So maybe someone interacts with your bot and then you want to capture that information for lead gen and follow up with them later. That's really nice functionality to extend what's possible with your chatbot. In addition, you can actually publish the bot and give it a unique URL, or depending on the plan you're on, you can actually embed it into your website. The other piece that I think is really powerful with this is if we go back to our data source, we're not restricted just to two columns. This was the dummy data they had in the system. But one thing that I could do is add a new field. We could call this attachment and then choose our attachment field type press OK. And let's say I had different documents that contained information. So I've set up a dummy one. This is just with Google Docs, and I downloaded this information as a PDF. So we can add a question down here of how much do widgets cost? And then let's provide this attachment, and we'll add that cost of services PDF. And now you can see back in our chatbot, there's this little icon above the training, and it can detect that we've added or changed our metadata available. So there's a new update and we can choose to retrain this. Now we can ask a question like, what are the price of blue and green widgets? And before we talked about this as cost, so we don't have an exact keyword match here, but let's go ahead and ask it that question. And it was able to successfully pull from that document and tell us the price of those various widgets. Now, of course, you can see that AI tables own AI capabilities are at the beginning end of the spectrum of what's possible right now with AI. But what I really appreciate is how easy these features are to use and bundled at a price that's really affordable for most businesses. If you have any questions about your own automation and software setup, don't hesitate to reach out to our team at automationhelpers.com, where we're offering free 30-minute consultations. <laughs>